What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to make a backbit in Blender. Y'all been asking me, so here's a tutorial on that. I already went ahead and imported the model in Blender. So what you want to do first, is you want to import your model, your 3D model first. <laughs> and then you want to add a plane. Then you want to go to edit mode on the plane and then subdivide it like I like to do like uh, 103 subdivisions like 100 plus 3 go to edge subdivide and then put in 100 hopefully my sound effects are not like uh, they were last time 100 and then go again and times another 3 So everything in the plane looks shiny, I don't know why. <laughs> then you want to go back to object mode. Then you want to rotate it. Or oh, the way it moves, it also depends on how you have it, and what direction you have it rotated on. You want to make sure it's at a nice, even 90 degrees. But if it's tilting even a little bit, it'll just go in some weird direction. I usually like to scale this up a little bit. Well, not that big, but a little smaller. And I just do this. I use the model as like a size reference, like how big I want it. Because if it's too big, it does. It, Either it takes too long or it doesn't work. <laughs> it's like just about right. Just about to face the model and and that's it. And then uh oh you wanna add two more planes in the back. This is how I do it. But when I add one, the collision acts all funky for some reason. When I only add when I only add uh, one plane under. So I like to add one and then duplicate that plane and then uh and then flip it over. But I tried to add one and then the class just clips right through it. <laughs> Both of them are just at an even 90 degrees. Then this one, you just press Shift and D and then you duplicate it. And then oh, I should have scaled both of them up to the same size. <laughs> and you scale them up to like whatever big you want them. I usually like to make those like super big. And then S for scale. Then I like to scale them both up to the same size. Like both of them. And then one, I need to flip to, you flip it to minus 90. This is basically my technique. Or how, how I make the simulations. Then you want to move them both up a little bit more. To make sure that like right in the middle of the of the cloth one, but the cloth like stretches out. So you have to make sure that it's, like, it's kind of like centered. When you're right here, you press Control to select both of them. And then when you're on this screen, you press Shift, and you can select both of them. You hold down Shift, and then you can select mul multiple things. Then like that, and then you go right here and this and this tab, and it says Physics, and then you add collision to both of them. Then you put this down to like the lowest it can go. And I just checked those both on the bottom. Even though it doesn't even make a difference, but I just checked them. And again for the other one. You can do that on one and then you can duplicate it and it'll duplicate the, the properties with it. With it that way you don't have to do it like for each individual each individual one. Then you want to go to the other plane, and then you want to go to cloth. You want to make sure the frames are at zero too, because then it'll it'll just make the the cloth explode, <laughs> and then it'll blow up the whole, your computer with it. <laughs> so now make sure it's at frame one when you do that, because if you add it when it's on frame like eight or ten, then you know, it crashes your whole, your whole entire computer. 
I just put the quality search to like the highest thing you go. Then the speed to 0 0.1 and then this one I like to put them all just down to 3. And the pressure I put it at minus 200 depending on what side the what side the plane is facing um it might go the opposite way <laughs> but from there you're just gonna you can adjust it to like just 200 if it goes the other way just um take out the minus because usually it depends on what side it's facing or uh, where it will go if it's facing the wrong way it'll just go like it'll fly away basically <laughs> and then crash the whole computer too so it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger and then it just explodes. <laughs> I usually like to do like uh, 10 frames. The way I used to like to do it is one individual frame at a time. Because then it'll tend to crash sometimes. So I will press the arrow key and then do each individual frame. That way uh, I don't have to risk like my whole computer crashing. So that's what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to speed up the video too. So that way you don't have to watch me doing each individual frame. Oh yeah, I almost forgot some other things. Like you put the, it's better to put the quality steps up like super high so that it works, it looks, uh, so it looks good. Then just put this to zero, like as low as it can go. And then this one too, as low as it can go. And then these ones, I just put them all down to zero. I don't know, doesn't really change anything, but I just put them all down to zero. Make sure the gravity is definitely at zero. Because if you have gravity with it, it'll just fall down. It'll make the simulation like take longer to bake. Because then it's going to be trying to like use gravity and then all that stuff at the same time. And then it'll just, it'll just explode. <laughs> and make sure everything's good too. Like make sure you're triple checking. Like everything's good. The model has collision too. These two planes in the back have collisions. Make sure to double check everything, but then if you just set it down, one of them doesn't have collision, and it'll, it'll just um, it'll either break or they won't do anything. Hopefully, it doesn't go too right through the two planes in the back. Oh, yeah, also make sure these two planes in the back are as close as possible. Press control while you're under to select both of them and then move them as close as possible. Once I have the collisions on, it, it will lag a little bit. Maybe it's because of the amount of vertices I have on under two, under two. Okay, I'm gonna start baking the simulation. See that what frame it starts glitching out. It's better to do individual frames when you're doing this, that way you can check at what at what point it starts to glitch out. That way it won't it won't just uh, explode your whole computer. Oh yeah, make sure to save it too. Save it with the cloth off. That way, if it does break, you can go back to it and then. If the frames that glitch out or somehow erase themselves, you won't let, you won't have to worry about the whole project being broken. So then I just press Control F to save, make sure everything's saved, and then go back in there and then turn it back on. Don't save it with the class simulation on, but then if something happens to the frames, uh, the whole project breaks, and then you can't open it anymore. It's happened to me a lot of times. So now on, I just turn off the cloth and then save it with the cloth off. But then the frames will get deleted and it'll just explode <laughs> when you try to open it again. Okay, time to, time to start baking the frames. Oh yeah, you, you can press the arrow keys to, bake, to do one frame at a time. Or you can click on bake and just bake them all, but if it crashes on one frame, it could crash your whole computer. But this is kind of a, it's kind of a, like a hit or miss. <laughs> so this is one, it won't even make it up to 10 frames. It'll, it'll stop at 8 and then from there it'll just bug out. The frames uh, at which it stops, it's, it's always random. Again, let's see at what frame it stops. Then just keep pressing the arrow key every time in each frame, and then this one there, bake the frame one frame at a time, that way you can get it right. And it won't blow up your whole computer. Okay, I'm finally done baking, baking all the frames. Does take a while because I think it takes like five to ten minutes per frame. It'll, it'll depend on the computer too. It could take up to twenty minutes sometimes, depending on what computer you have. 
But here, here's like the final result. In the meta detail, it, it gets it depends on the vertices that you add to it. Also, if I had to mention that uh, you have to go over here to shade smooth to make it look smooth. And then to, the, to this tab right here, there's the switch the materials. That's how you switch the materials on the model. Well, also one more thing, I like to add. Uh, I like to add uh, layers of shrink wrap and and smooth modifiers, and also a subdivision modifier to give it more detail. I used to add a subdivision, but I might lag right now. <laughs> I'll add that, and then I put it up to the sometimes shoe, to add more detail to it, and then uh, the a shrink wrap modifier to this. Then it gives it like a, just makes it more detailed. Then right here you just look for the mesh that you wanted to shrink wrap on, which I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I'm guessing it's this one. If not, maybe the other one. And you put it to like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and then you just there it from there until it looks like, until it looks really smooth. I have no idea if I put it on the right mesh. I had the wrong one selected. <laughs> but you select the cloth mesh and the cloth mesh, and then, or you say add like a, another subdivision to it. Then I add the shrink shrink wrap, and then, and the smooth modifier, and then I set it to project. And I put negative and positive, and then put it at 0 0.1. And this one, just select the the mesh that's underneath it. And then hide the mesh. So it doesn't do the clipping. Oh, yeah, and the mesh itself, uh, I need to add some subdivisions. I'm going to put it down. I know it's going to lag right now as I turn it on. Then the needs measure so it doesn't look all blocky like that. Um, you just add a subdivision modifier to them. And there we go. It looks more smoother now. The more subdivisions you add, the more smoother it looks. And there. You got yourself something similar to what I do. And then I uh, just make sure that I add like four more of these. Oh, that like, uh, I usually add like three more of those, three more layers of them. You just click on it and then you put, and then you put a, uh, you press shift and it'll, it'll duplicate them. And this one too, it'll duplicate them and just, uh, Layer it as many times as you need. Let's put them in this order. I usually like to add another one of these in between them. But for the sake of the video, um, I can't really do it based on recording. <laughs> but uh, I usually add like one more of these and I put it like in between these. And it makes it look more smooth. Like it'll smooth out all this. This one I just set it up. I usually like set it to 12. And it'll slowly start smoothing it out. You see? It slowly starts to smooth it out. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And I'll uh, see you in another tutorial. If I do I ever make another one.